My name is Lynn Sullivan, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Herald News and the Taunton Daily Gazette. I'd like to welcome you to the 2016 Best and Brightest Awards Ceremony. This is truly one of our favorite programs. Each year, we seek nominations from family members, coaches, teachers, employers, you name it, of outstanding young people ages 16 to 21. And each year, we receive nominations that just blow us away. So every year when I recruit our judges, I flat out lie to them. I tell them, don't worry, this will be easy. But it's not easy. Separating great kids from even greater kids is not an easy task. But tonight I'd like to thank Bay Coast Bank, which is also a sponsor of the Best and Brightest program. I'd also like to recognize State Representative Alan Sylvia and all of our delegation provided uh, citations for the winners, which is wonderful. I'd like to thank you all for being here and for helping us honor these winners. And of course, I need to thank our event sponsor, Bristol Community College. They were very gracious in hosting this event and allowing us to use this beautiful venue. Dr. Jack Sprega, the president of BCC, he typically is here to welcome you, uh, but this week he was called out of town for the birth of his newest grandchild, so I told him he was excused. And now I'd like to bring up Aaron Frechette, our opinion editor and chairman of our community advisory board. He'll introduce our keynote speaker. Well, thank you very much, Lynn, and thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, an exciting night where we can honor uh, these promising and bright young minds in our community. Congratulations to you all. Now, last October, the Herald News Community Advisory Board began honoring the good people and organizations in Fall River um, that are making a lasting difference in our community with the Fall River Forward Award. Now, in selecting our monthly award winners, the board, which has representatives from each of the communities that the Herald News covers, considers civic-minded people and groups who are featured in Herald News stories over the previous month. I'd like to um, ask any community advisory board members who we may have here tonight to be recognized. I don't know if we have anyone. Okay. Well, I'm here representing the board. So, uh, but uh, it's a great, great group of people who give us advice uh, about uh, about uh, things that we should be doing, things we shouldn't be doing, and I appreciate their help. Now, shortly after a story regarding Frank Cabral's retirement as executive director of Sir Jobs for Progress appeared back in late December, he was nominated by one of our board members, Ed Hill of Swansea, uh, who's also chairman of the Diamond Bengals Foundation, for the, uh, this monthly award. But inspired by Frank's many years of contributions to the community, the board thought it might be better to have a Lifetime Achievement Award to recognize people like Frank, who had contributed to the community over a long and distinguished career. So I approached Lynn about it, and she came up with an even better idea, to not only have the Lifetime Achievement Award, but to present that award at the Best and Brightest Award Ceremony, and to ask that recipient to be the keynote speaker for the ceremony. After all, what better way to continue a tradition of community service than to have one generation who's entering retirement share words of wisdom with the upcoming generation of community leaders who are beginning to enter the workforce. We think Frank Cabral is a great fit for the Lifetime Achievement Award. He was a founder and was involved in operating the local affiliate of Sir Jobs for Progress in Fall River for over 35 years. And those have not all been easy years as the organization at times struggled for funding, but was always somehow able to get the job done through hard work and perseverance. Frank served for over three decades as the assistant director and then he moved up to the director's post in 2013 after the longtime executive director Paula Raposa retired leading the agency that's kept the focus on providing a wide array of services to people in the community, including ESL classes, education, GED programs, and job training, among many others. In fact, Sir Jobs is often the first stop for many immigrants who come to Fall River, and it's open to many people from the community and has helped them. During his long career, Frank, who has been hailed by our board members who've worked alongside him in various organizations as a city treasure and an unsung hero, over several decades, was also very active in other aspects of the community, in organizations like the Fall River Area Chamber of Commerce and the Prince Henry Society. Frank even played a key role in the construction of the gates of the city along Fall River's waterfront. Frank's contributions to the community have been recognized by the Portuguese government and by the Fall River Chamber of Commerce as a recipient of the John S. Brayton Jr. Memorial Outstanding Community Service Recognition Award. 
In the 1990s, he was even invited by then President Bill Clinton to the White House for a reception for outstanding members of the Portuguese American community. Frank, if you can come up here, I'd like to present you the award on behalf of the Community Advisory Board. And thank you again, Frank, for your service, and uh, thank you for sharing your words of wisdom with the best and brightest tonight. That's one thing I don't like to do too much, is put my glasses on, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, dear students, dear dedicated family members, honorable elected officials, dear friends, I would like to start by thanking the Arrow News News Community Advisory Board for nominating me to receive the first Fall River Forward Lifetime Achievement Award. Second, but most important, to congratulate all the students selected by the Fall River Arrow News and the Taunton Daily Gazette for being the best and the brightest in the Taunton and Fall River areas. I am humbled and honored in sharing this event with all the young honorees. In fact, as I read the background of your outstanding achievements, I cannot help but have this feeling of questioning. Who am I to be here tonight and be invited to speak to you on how to continue to be the best and the brightest when you already have accomplished so much at such a young age. Your impressive record speaks for itself. Therefore, with your permission, I will attempt to make some brief remarks. I will begin by categorically stating that we are here celebrating your future and not my past. Nevertheless, all of us have the honor of living under the same umbrella of apprenticeship. I too, at your age, was allowed to dream. I arrived in this country, more specifically, in Fall River in 1963. I arrived alone at the age of 18. It was the beginning of my journey to a very rewarding life experience. I was able to continue my education marry a wonderful woman, have two wonderful children, and our two wonderful grandchildren. I was very lucky to have the best job in the world, that is, working with people. I will not bore you with many details, only to say that I am a veteran believer in coexistence. We need to fully harvest our main resource, which is people. Very early, I learned that, paradoxically, social fears unites and divides us. All of us should learn that difference should not be considered a human problem, but used as a catalyst to create a reality that requires compassionate leaderships to detect, diagnose, and resolve problems. Forced ignorance, ignorance and civic alienation are not undesirable <clears throat> and will lead to acts of injustice. Therefore, let's treat one another as ends rather than means. It is important to remember that all of us should be proud of our communities and should strive to make them a better place. As you embark to the next phase of your life, you will find more difficult challenges, but I know you already possess what it takes to address them successfully. You have all the potential to do great things and change the world. Your excitement will be contagious because I am sure you will surround yourselves with the right people. I believe it's fair to think 
that some of you, for understandable reasons, will move out of the communities where you were born. However, regardless of where you will be, I am sure you certainly will play a significant role in revitalizing your community under the banner of social acceptance and pride. Nobody wins where somebody loses. Let me finish by saying that whenever I travel from Fall River to Providence, to Boston, New Hampshire, Canada, Europe, or some other place, I always carry the sentiment that I do, I leave Fall River, Fall River never leaves me. Thanks for listening to this senior member of society with an accent and struggling to find the right message. This leaves me no doubt that you will continue to be the best and the brightest. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, and now for our awards. The trophies, you'll notice, represent diamonds, and they're meant to symbolize the fact that each of these young people is a gem within this community. These 16 winners, eight from the Fall River area and eight from the Taunton area, truly stood out from the pack. And to give you an idea of just how amazing these young people are, I decided to put together some statistics. Of the 16 people identified as our best and brightest, six work jobs and like 35 hours a week type jobs. Three were team captains, 11 do some sort of volunteer work, seven were on student council, eight made National Honor Society. Granted, we expect that kind of stuff, but this group had some unique qualifications. One logged over 600 community service hours in her high school career, 600. One worked 35 hours a week in addition to going to school and being a captain of sports. One was recruited to be a Division I college athlete. Two collected and distributed gently used prom dresses to girls who couldn't afford one. One is a drama club president. One cares for her special needs sister. One raised $11,000 for victims of the Boston Marathon bombings. One was captain of all three sports teams that he played on. They've collected things like eyeglasses, toothbrushes, and tap shoes for those in need. Several are volunteers for Special Olympics or unified sports teams that pair them with athletes with special needs. As for the future, some of their planned careers include nurse, nurse practitioner, doctor, orthodontist, set designer, dance studio owner, engineer, and pediatric radiographer. And I know we say this isn't necessarily an academic award, but I'm pretty sure these young people don't even know what a C plus is. You see, these young people are truly incredible. And more importantly, they're from, they're from here. They were educated in our schools and they helped out in our community. And we all should be very proud of them. Truly, the future of this community is bright in the hands of our best and brightest. And I'm serious when I say this is one of the best parts of my job. First, finding all of you, and then telling the world about you. So I'm going to ask that our state representatives help me, because they provided the citations also for you. And I don't know, Erin, you want to help? OK. So we'll start with the winners from the Taunton area. That's this pile. So we have Nathaniel Baker from Coyle and Cassidy High School. We have Anna Broder from Dighton Rehoboth High School. Brooke Butler from Bristol Plymouth.
Brian, I'm going to butcher your name, Brian Sharon Font. Nice, all right, <laughs> from Taunton High School. Anthony Costa from Coyle and Cassidy. <laughs> Jacob D'Souza from Taunton High School. Kelsey Hebert from Taunton High School. And Brooklyn Tolley from Taunton High School. And now we have the winners from the Fall River area. We have Casey Aruda from Somerset Berkeley Regional High School. Samantha Cookingham from Tiverton High School. She couldn't be here, but Grandma, we can give you the award. <laughs> Devin Pereira from BMC Durfee High School. <laughs> Emma Fiore from Joseph Case High School. Meredith Forcier from BMC Durfee High School. We also had John Myron from Somerset Berkeley High School, but he actually had to leave to go to a sports award banquet. Uh, Ian Roshley McNally from Tiverton High School. And then Elizabeth Sartini from Tiverton High School. All right, folks, thank you so much for being here. We're so proud of all of you young people. Uh, please enjoy some refreshments. I'd like to thank Representative Paul Schmidt, who snuck in here, and also Mayor, Fall River Mayor Jay Zulkaria, snuck in during the speeches. Thank you very much. We've got plenty of copies of the special section that the, the kids were in. Take as many as you want. I've got another pile under the, under the table. <laughs>